here i am explaining the reflection by a plane mirror this is a plane mirror in every house we are having this type of mirror how can you check whether the given mirror is plane mirror or not look into the plane mirror you can see the same size image the object and image are in the same size so that is the identification how can you check the given mirror is plane mirror or not so here we are discussing the reflection by plane mirror so you know that when a ray falls on the metal uh, mirror so this is known as incident ray a ray is falling on the mirror surface that ray is known as incident ray and you know that the back side of the mirror is it, it is coated it is coated with the silver and this is the reflecting surface sorry this mirror is broken one this is the surface from which the reflection takes place so a plane mirror is represented by like this it is represented by like this and these lines are representing the back, back side of the mirror back side of the mirror so it's a ray it is falling on the mirror okay and that ray it which is falling on the mirror it is known as incident ray so the ray which is falling on the surface it is known as incident ray and you have to mark down with the straight line with an arrow mark arrow mark shows the direction of movement of the ray and the ray can be reflected like this for example like this so after falling to a plane mirror it is bouncing back it is bouncing back so that is that phenomenon is known as reflection of light so when a, when a ray falls on the metal surface it bounces back to the same medium and that phenomenon is known as reflection of light so here this is the incident ray and this is the reflector ray here we are taking an imaginary line which is normal to the surface which is normal to the mirror so that imaginary line is known as normal and normal is what normal is it is a imaginary it is an imaginary line which makes 90 degree to the surface so you can make a number of an infinite number of imaginary lines which is 90 degree to the mirror surface so this is the imaginary line that is normal and normal always makes 90 degree with the surface so if i show separately this is an imaginary line this is known as normal this is an imaginary line so don't draw with dark lines only with the dotted lines you draw it so this dotted line shows it is an imaginary line we are drawing normal to the surface or or 90 degree to the surface so you can draw infinite number of normals on the surface of the plane mirror so this represents normal of the normal to the surface this imaginary line is known as normal what is the need of normal what is why we are drawing normal so normal is a it is used to this is normal normal makes 90 degree to the surface normal makes 90 degree to the surface so here this is a normal so it it makes 90 degree to the surface so why what is the need of drawing normal we are calculating the angle of incidence or angle of reflection from the normal we need a re reference line 
we need a reference line to measure the angle of incidence or angle and the angle of reflection so from normal you are measuring the angle of incidence this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection so what is the need of normal normal is an imaginary line which is used to find the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection in the case of reflection in the case of the phenomenon of reflection so we are measuring the angles always from the normal we are measuring the angle always from the normal so from the normal to the incident ray that gives the angle of incidence and from the normal to the reflected ray it gives the angle of reflection so that is the importance of drawing normal that is the importance of drawing normal so normal is an imaginary line which is which is 90 degree to the surface you can draw infinite number of normal on a surface so this is the incident ray this is the reflected ray and this is the imaginary line and which is known as normal and here we marked angle of incidence and angle of reflection angle of incidence and angle of reflection for regular reflection for regular reflection angle of incidence always equal to angle of reflection for a regular reflection that means what a reflection from a polished smooth surface the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of reflection regular reflection takes place for example from a mirror mirror is a, its surface is very smooth and polished surface for example if the angle incident on angle of incidence is 40 degree then the angle of incidence is 40 degree then the angle of reflection also will be 40 degree so it, it it obeys only in the case of regular reflection regular reflection takes place only in the case of very smooth and polished surface example from a mirror and in the case of irregular reflection in the case of irregular reflection angle of incidence will not be equal to angle of reflection that means when a ray falls on the on a rough surface it will uh, reflect it can reflect in any way which does not obey what the angle of incidence and the angle of re reflection that means angle of incidence will not be equal to angle of reflection in the case of irregular reflection in the case of irregular reflection so in the case of irregular reflection if you draw the diagram if you draw the diagram in the case of irregular reflection it is a rough surface we are drawing a rough surface and this is the incident ray if you are drawing the normal here and this is the reflected ray in it it can happen in the case of uh, regular reflection but in the case of irregular reflection it can reflect in any way so it can go like this or like this any way it can go it so the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will not be same angle of incidence will not be equal to angle of reflection in the case of irregular reflection or diffused reflection or scattered reflection so angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection when the reflection is regular and it will not be equal in the case of irregular reflection and another important thing is in the case of regular reflection for example you have the incident ray this is the normal this is the normal this is the incident ray incident ray normal and it can be the reflected ray it can be the reflected ray so if i show like this 
this is the incident ray this is the normal and this is the reflected ray so in the case of regular reflection in the case of regular reflection these all these all three will be in a single plane or in a single surface if i keep here it will be on the this white board so incident ray normal and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane it will not enter into another plane like this it will not enter in the case of regular reflection the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal lie in a single plane and no ray will come out to another plane or another surface so that this is the this is the another characteristic of regular reflection that means incident ray a normal reflected ray all lie in the same plane it it lie in the same plane the reflected ray will not go to the another plane like this or like this it all lie in the same plane but in the case of irregular reflection incident ray the reflected ray sorry incident ray the normal and the reflected ray the, the reflected ray can go to another plane or another surface it can go like this it will not be in the same plane it can go in any way it can go to another surface or it can go to another plane so in the case of regular reflection the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal lie in the same plane in the case of irregular reflection the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal they will not be in a single plane if you draw that one if you draw that one this is a plane mirror this is the normal this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray this all are lying in the same plane this is in the case of regular reflection but in the case of irregular reflection this reflected ray can go outside out of the plane it can go out of the plane so that type of reflection is known as irregular reflection and the loss of reflection loss of reflection is these two characteristics that is angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection it it is valued in the case of regular reflection only and the second one is for the incident ray incident ray normal and the reflected ray they all lie in the same plane or in the same surface these are the two laws of reflection angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection incident ray reflected ray and the normal lie in the same plane so these two are obeying in the case of regular reflection these two are obeying in the case of regular reflection so loss of reflection is valid in the case of regular reflection only in the case of irregular reflection angle of incidence will not be equal to angle of reflection incident ray normal reflected ray they will not be in the same plane so where you can see the irregular reflection the reflection from a floor the reflection from a wall so from every surface from a rough surface always irregular reflection takes place and the angle of incidence will not be equal to angle of reflection the incident ray the normal and the reflected ray they will not be in the same plane so here we are land the incident ray the incident ray means the ray which is falling on the surface the normal normal means what it is an imaginary line which is 90 degree to the surface you can draw infinite number of normal on a surface reflected ray reflected ray means means what the ray which is bouncing back to the same medium that is reflected ray what even by angle of incidence angle of incidence is what it is the angle between the incident ray and the normal what is the angle of reflection it is the angle between 
the normal and the reflected ray. So these are the uh, calculations when a ray falls on a mirror or a surface. So there will be incident ray, there will be normal, there will be a reflected ray, there will be angle of incidence and the angle of reflection also. So in the case of regular reflection only, laws of reflections are valid. In the case of irregular reflection, they are not valid.